Well, welcome to the Fellowship Bible Church Global Church Podcast. Uh, we're the Global Missions Pastors, Scott and Jim. And uh, we got some special guests here with us uh, for this episode. And But before we introduce them, um, Jim, why don't you give folks an update on uh, just how you're recovering and feeling since your mountain bike mishap? Yeah. <laughs> uh, appreciate everybody thinking uh, and praying for me. Uh, I'm doing yesterday. I was I was feeling feeling better, and then today I'm also feeling better. It's uh, Thursday, April the thirtieth. So I'm feeling a lot better today. So thanks. It's a week. I go today that I had surgery on my collarbone where they put a plate and several screws in to get my collarbone realigned and straightened back out. So I'm feeling better. My um, I'm still wearing a sling. I'll have my arm in a sling for another week or so. Uh, go back and check in with the doctor, but um, I'm doing much better. So, so thanks to everybody for all your thoughts and prayers and notes and text and WhatsApp notes and, and um, people have helped with meals. It's been great. So we're just really appreciative for all the, all the support. Yeah. So thanks. And um, like, like Scott said, we have uh, Juan and Tirsa with us on this podcast and they're in Cuenca, Ecuador. And we're happy to have you guys with us uh, on this one. So thanks for joining us. And just um, tell us a little bit about your, you know, you guys and your family. And some of our listeners uh, might not know all that much about you. Uh, so a little bit about your, yourselves, your family, ministry that uh, God has you guys involved in there in Cuenca. Hi, Jim. Hi, Scott. It's nice to be able to be part of this podcast and to share with the FBC people um, how we're doing. Um, and we are very thankful that we can share with you what God is doing in our lives here in, in Ecuador. Uh, Tirsa and I and our daughter Talula, we live in Ecuador in Cuenca. And we work with a small um, church about uh, uh, 19 to 20 22 families, and um, it's been more than six weeks that we haven't been able to meet with them because of the coronavirus, but um, um, here we have been able to, to get together on Zoom calls as, as today, as we are recording this po podcast. But um, we are thankful that we're doing okay, and um, we we're very thankful that we can share this this time with you today. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about about your ministry. Say, just give us a little bit of a snapshot before um, you know before the lockdown. Kind of what what type of things are you all involved in and the ministry with the church. I'll just give a little bit of an overview of what the ministry to the church consists of. Yeah, I, I meet with a man once a week and um, I have a regular uh, Bible study that we are studying Romans on Wednesdays and um, Tirsa meets with the ladies on Tuesdays and she studies with them creation to Christ first in the afternoon and then she's going right now through principles of spiritual growth and so she studies uh, almost the whole afternoon with them and also on Fridays we have a non online um, study and um, on Sundays we meet but um, um, we also take trips to Visit the Quichuas. It's a it's a big group of indigenous uh, people who um, live in the middle of the country or in the mountains, and um, we work there with about seventy pastors 
that we have been training them and sharing from creation to Christ to position and then act and Romans and we finished Ephesians and uh, we were just starting with uh, first Corinthians when uh, when uh, we were weren't able to keep traveling because of the coronavirus but um, <clears throat> last, uh, last December we had a graduation after four and a half years of studying uh, systematically uh, the Bible with them and and it was it was a joy to see them how happy they were and how um, how much support from their churches they had we were about I would say it, it was a coliseum where we had the graduation for them and um, all of the churches that uh, the pastors uh, are in charge with uh, came for that celebration and it was a it was a joy and God knew that they 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 needed all of this um, uh, deeper knowledge of of the Lord to to deal with with these things now. And um, so, Juan, uh, these Quechua people um, give a little background about them as a people. When when were they first reached, and how were they reached, and how long have these churches been in existence? Um, the Quechuas have been, uh, um, well, they have been reached for many years now, almost a hundred years. Yeah, the first missionary came like in 1920s, mm -hmm. so about a hundred years ago. But, um, but, uh, the, the... So they, they became, or they had more than a, a personal relationship with, with God through the union in Christ. They had just a bunch of religion. So they were used to talking and, um, well, I mean, used to just having a religion in their lives. What I mean in religion is that um, um, they, they didn't have any much difference with the Catholic Church. And um, for them, salvation was based on, on how they behaved. Hmm. And um, so even when they started with a good um, Bible teaching base, uh, along the years, because of the lack of, of uh, good training, uh, they went. They went all over the place, and um, so during these five or six years that I've been in contact with them, I've been able to understand a little better um, how many, uh, uh, you know, misplaced <laughs> information that they had, mm -hmm. and also it's been great to study um, chronologically. And yeah. uh, put the solid foundations in uh, in uh, in their beliefs, but also uh, 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 it's not something that we have done by ourselves. It's only right. God who had yeah opened our own uh, minds and souls, and you know to to understand that, and and He has done the same thing with many of these pastors who has a. Uh, very clear understanding right now of who God is and what he has done and, and the yeah. hope that we have now. Hmm. Yeah, so Jim and I have had the privilege of going with you a few times <clears throat> up there to visit with those folks. And, and I remember um, hearing there's like seven to 800 churches. There, there are, the biggest organization in, in the province, it's like a, area where they live uh it's um it's they have around more than a thousand churches wow and um they and they have a radio station they have several radio stations wow they have a um, compound where they train people they are very well organized very yeah. well organized but uh, as i was saying 
uh, even they have such a big like infrastructure, mm -hmm. the message that they carried was really off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the thing. So you look at them from the outside, and it looks like this big, organized, um, really well-established, you know, huge group of churches and believers. And, yes. and on the outside, it just looks very encouraging. But when you get to know them, they were very confused in the faith, weren't they? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think it's, it's uh, different than any other like organization they they look for numbers huh. not really dig deep and um huh. they are not really interested in in spiritual growth in a spiritual growth exactly but uh, you know it it took it took some time and when they once they open up you know this this group of guys and their families and um it's, it's just a different, completely different uh, group, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, they, have, they are now so well organized in between the class, which mm -hmm. is 70 pastors, that they put a lot of um, influence in the big organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think too it would help to mention that as a people group, there is like two and a half million people wow. in Ecuador. And so, mm -hmm. Um, as a church working with 70 pastors, that's kind of yeah. just like a drop in the bucket right. compared to like the big picture. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but what's really encouraging is what Han said that these 70 pastors, most of them are older. Hmm. And so within their culture, they are given a lot of respect and the teaching and the things that they share, the younger pastors are picking up on and they're kind of taking it to their churches now hmm. um, in this month we are supposed to start with 25 new pastors yes book one um but juan wasn't able to go because um we are locked in uh here in cuenca and each pastor represents two or three churches so if we do uh, 95 pastors times two we're looking at over or close to 200 hmm. churches that are getting the wow. message right now wow. but that would probably be a small percentage of the whole people group. Yeah. So yeah. you've been you've been teaching uh, seventy pastors now for four and a half years, and when you first started, they were very confused in the faith. And so, how would you how would you compare them now to where they were? <laughs> it's it's a it's completely different. It's yeah. completely different. It's like talking to believers, talking to to true believers that understand mm -hmm. um, and know God and, and um, to a certain point, understand also that uh, the Christian life is, is uh, the life of Christ in us uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it's, it's really encouraging. I mean, yeah. every time I go there, um, it's just a joy. It's just mm -hmm. a joy to see uh, no matter the circumstances that they are going through, um, they have hope and um, hmm. yeah w the, during this time a week ago, one of the pastors he 's one of the oldest ones mm -hmm. very faithful and um, he has several uh, like uh, health problems uh, but um very 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 teachable and um he called me and he said um, i'm really sad i'm really sad uh, they call me uh pastor uh, juanito which is little john <laughs> and um i'm really sad uh, i'm studying the bible but i'm really sad so my 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 son-in-law passed away because of the coronavirus and my daughter mm -hmm. is sick and my, my wife is sick. They, they used to live or they live in Guayaquil, mm -hmm. but because of circumstances that God allowed, mm -hmm. he stayed in the province of uh, Chimborazo, which is up north, mm -hmm. and the rest of the family was in Guayaquil. And since the, the borders of the, of between, between 
provinces were were closed, he couldn't go back to see them. Hmm. So he stayed in in um, in Riobamba, where where he lives. It's close to 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 where we meet every month. And he couldn't go and see them or anything, but he said, "I'm I'm, I'm sad because he died, and and my my son-in-law he was he was getting the message. He said he was he started a church, mm-hmm. and um, and in the coast, and he was he was serving the Lord, and and now he's not here anymore." He said, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. "But um, and um, I have talked like like with him with several other pastors that have called and." And, uh, and it's just, um, uh, you know, I, I, I've grown to, to love them as, as family to many of them. Mm-hmm. And, um, so, so you, you get sad too, because of yeah. those things. Yeah. And, um, you know, when I was talking to him as an older <laughs> man and comes to me and, and, you know, I, I wanted to cry, but. I also said, you know, even though when I'm how you are feeling, God is God is in control, and He said yes, God God is sovereign, and and um, and yeah. let's just keep praying for us to to look at Him. You know? Yeah, well, praise the Lord. He's had four and a half years of discipleship, and you know, being led into a deeper knowledge of God and the finished work of Christ, and the hope that is His in Christ. Yeah, absolutely. Who knows? Who knows how this would affect him? You know, had he had he not had this time with you? Absolutely. I, it's um, as I as a, as I was saying, you know, every time I I used to go there, I came encouraged. Yeah, yeah. And, um, um, so, any of these guys um, you've been teaching for four and a half years, they're all pastoring other churches. Um, are, are you, um, hearing any, uh, testimonies from them about their churches? And so I, I assume the, you know, the, the lessons that you've been teaching to the pastors, they've now begun, begun to turn around and reteach to their churches is, is their reteaching of the lessons in their churches having the same effect in their churches as it's had in their own lives? Are they becoming more established in the faith? I would say yes, Scott, because I've talked to some of them and mm. um, and they have been studying with the churches. Mm. They haven't finished the whole, uh, all of the five books, but um, mm. but they are teaching or they were teaching before this um, little by little and sharing the, 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 the same materials that we have with the people with it with their yeah. churches huh. and uh it's been a it's been a good uh, good good thing for them too you know yeah yeah and, and many of them have also had uh, some troubles hmm. because um uh other people from the churches or leaders that they didn't study they opposed to the message of of, of the cross hmm. and also uh, of the way of studying chronologically, hmm. but God has been faithful with with them, and and um, and some of them have have uh, really um, grabbed onto the lessons, and, hmm. and they are sharing those. Yeah, and I would <clears throat> I would expect it to have the same effect where we've seen it, you know, in other places, um, Kenya uh in togo this last trip to togo uh you know in togo we've been meeting with the lokpa pastors all these years well the last time we were there there were there were pastors from three other groups that you know just through their interaction with the lokpa and seeing the lokpa churches becoming more established in the faith and and hearing testimonies from these people of you know a deeper understanding of truth that that they don't have. And, and now, you know, the churches are the, in these other groups, they want it. And so I would, I would expect that you'll be seeing the same thing among the Kichwa churches that 
as these 70 pastors continue to establish their churches in the faith, eventually other churches are going to realize, hmm, <laughs> they, yeah. they seem a lot more mature and a lot more understanding of truth than our church. Yeah, <clears throat> I, think, I think that's what's, what's happening, you know, as, as Tirsa was saying, huh. I was supposed to meet with a new group, but um, this, I wasn't going to run the class or anything because the, the purpose when we started this meeting was that um, once they are trained, they could train others. Huh. So I reminded that to them and, and I said, you know, I'm going to help you in uh, everything I can, but I'm not going to teach. So you are going to teach and they, they, they were, they got organized and they had a, like a class committee to, to share that and to organize the new, new students. And they had about 20 new uh, students that, um, that they were excited because they wanted to know how is that these old pastors who everybody put them on the side and didn't want to do anything with them, now they are so like, uh, like fired. Wow. <laughs> fired with, with, I'm fired with Christ, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're not uh, fired, they're on fire with the Lord. Yeah. They there still have their jobs. <laughs> we, we, knew, we knew what he meant. <laughs> I know. Uh, just, well, just in case you. the reader, I mean thank the you, listeners, mate. just to yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Thank you for, for, for that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's encouraging. Yeah, they were on fire. <laughs> yeah. Well, I really hope that... Uh, when when things open up again and we can travel again at some point, Jim and I can come down and and go with you. I'd love to go out, actually go out and visit some of these guys in their on their on site in their locations with their churches that you've been teaching all these years, and just uh, you know see it being carried out and lived out and passed on to their churches. Yeah, it's it's true. In fact, I was going to go to one of those churches that got opened up. Uh, um an opportunity to do that and uh it got canceled yeah we mm -hmm. they closed the the borders between provinces and i couldn't go and god's in control you know i talked yeah. to the pastor about that invited me and he said yeah we are everybody's home and we we are trusting the lord mm -hmm. and i've been in touch with them i think here in 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 the church in cuenca I record all the studies and share them through social media. I also share those messages to them, and many of them have have um, reached out to me and say like, "Thank you for sharing those messages," and and, um, <clears throat> and I think it has helped them to to know that uh, God is in control. You know, they have these uh, ideas of. Um, uh, or, or other people have told them, you know, people are saying that God is punishing uh, people because they are not sharing Christ and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, God punished his son already. So he's not going to punish us anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. And we are suffering because of the effects of, of sin yeah, and not, not because God is angry or something like, like mm -hmm. that. Right. Right. So <clears throat> it's been a great opportunity to contact with them too. Share with well, us a little bit about the um, about the you know the spiritual life of the church there in Cuenca. I know, like you mentioned, Tirso, you're meeting with the ladies, and and um, Juan, you said you're meeting with the men, and and up until the lockdown, you were having services on Sunday, and just share a little bit about you know, what God's doing there in the church, the local church in Cuenca. Yeah. And how long, how, like, how long have you been the pastor there? We, I've been the pastor here for 12 years. Hmm. And, uh, uh, it's been, it's been a slow process. Um, we live in a city where most of the people are Catholic. They are, they are, uh, evangelical churches, but um, as probably with the same confusions that uh, the Kichos had, mm -hmm. and um, so it's been a slow process of uh, discipling people. And um, 
I, I really believe that um, the ministry that uh, Tirsa has been sharing with the ladies has, has helped in an incredible way. Uh, just because um, the, the, the society here is used to um, matriarchal, it's a matriarchal society, mm -hmm. but um, when the women in the church are not um, being taught, um, they, they cause a lot of problems in the family. Mm. So uh, the discipling that Tisha has been doing with the ladies has um, mm. been a great, great help to help also the men to, to step forward and, and, uh, and uh, you know, face that they are in the flesh or they are not yeah. being the leaders in their houses and that they need, they need God. So yeah, it, it's been a great help, and I know from uh, some some of the ladies that are a great help for the church, hmm. serving ladies, and um, it's great. great so, so Tirsa, um, you know, Annette and I, we were missionaries in Thailand with the Pokeren, and and we, you know, the the focus of our teaching was the same as as yours is, you know emphasizing the finished work of Christ and taking people into uh, an understanding of their identification with Christ and the fact that their old man was crucified and they've been raised to newness of life in Christ. And this is the basis for sanctification and not works and effort and all that kind of thing. And, and <clears throat> the Karen church, you know, these guys are, they're surrounded by other churches, you know, churches in other villages that weren't taught that way, that are more legalistic. And so they've been able to see the difference in, you know, what they've been taught compared to, you know, other believers around them. And so what's, what's some of the feedback you're getting from, you know, the ladies you've been discipling and things like that? Um, it's, it's actually really encouraging. Uh, it, it's like Quan said, it's been a slow process. When, when we first got married, the ladies didn't want anything to do with me and I didn't really know what my place was either culturally because I'm we're the we were the youngest couple in the church and also put <laughs> yeah. in the position of leadership um but we have just been studying systematically consistently and it we've had ups and downs we've had four women in ladies bible study and now we average about 20 ladies wow um, at, at bible study every week um uh. and I would just say uh Clearly what the Lord has done is that he has produced his life in these women so that it's no longer what I come to church to consume. It's I come to church to serve. Hmm. So um, for example, like Juan is mentioning, we do a really long haul on Tuesdays. I actually teach from four in the afternoon till about eight 30 at night. Hmm. Um, and I work uh, with four ladies who um, I've, I've been discipling and worked closely with the last couple of years um, and they have broken off and are now discipling groups of two or three women starting wow. with creation of Christ. Mm -hmm. And even uh, during the coronavirus, they on their own uh, got with their groups, they schedule a zoom time, they get together and they are consistently meeting. So wow. um, what has gone God done is he's growing these believers mm -hmm. to do the work of the ministry. It's, Amen. It's, in, in the women's area and, and with the children, um, it doesn't depend on us. We might give direction or help with logistics or they'll come to Juan and say, is it okay if we do this? Um, but they are really the hands and the feet and they're really effectively doing the work of the ministry to disciple other women. Um, and I think that that is what Ephesians 4 talks about when it says, you know, he's given gifts to each of us so that we all reach yeah. unity and maturity in the faith. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something that we really see with the women. Um, and they do it not in their own strength. So not based on like activism or I want a position of leadership so that people will listen to me. <laughs> they do yeah. it because they desire to study. They desire to share the truth of the cross with other people because of the impact that it has had on their life. So these four women that I work with, one of them is single. She's 29, 30. Another is in her late 60s. 
Wow. Another is almost 40. And then the, four, the third lady is in her mid 50s. So we have a really good representation mm. of just the general population in the church, which I also find really encouraging uh, mm. because God has appointed these ladies uh, in the church to do that work. Um, wow. And so like uh, currently with the coronavirus lockdown, we meet on Tuesdays. The ladies continue with their creation to Christ study. Uh, three of the ladies are actually our Sunday school teachers. So on Saturdays, they log on to a Zoom call where we teach firm foundations for kids. Um, and they're doing the work teaching the kids in the church too with Juan, who is on the call now. And we also are doing a book club, an online book club, uh, where we're reading uh, when, I think in English it's called When Life Falls Apart by Warren Wearsby, specifically about suffering um, in the Christian life. And so we read a certain amount of chapters every week, and then they go and they share that with the ladies um, once a week on another Zoom call. So one of the ladies told me she meets with somebody on Monday, she meets with somebody on Tuesday, and then she meets with somebody on Wednesday, all on Zoom, mm. all on her own. Mm. Wow. So um, God is really faithful, uh, and, and yeah. we are encouraged to see mm -hmm. that. And uh, we would just encourage anybody yeah. to trust the Lord, to trust his timing, um, and that he is going to put the desire and the ability in the people in your church to do the work. Mm -hmm. You can just sit back and be encouraged and inspired yeah. by his mm -hmm. finished work. Yeah. We, we definitely miss seeing them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Because yeah. He has become a good, good group of um, family and friends. Mm, yeah, we we definitely miss seeing them, and um, and and uh, it's been nice also, but also uh, a time for us to trust the Lord and say, okay, Lord, we mm. we need to just we can see how they're doing more than little little bit, you know. Yeah. But, so uh, so to go from you know how you described your beginning, you know being the youngest couple in the church and you're not really accepted. And, you know, at that time people weren't, you know, real grounded, you know, in the truth. Um, I know they had heard some from your dad, Wilson. Um, and uh, then, you know, I, I don't remember how many years after it was <clears throat> that you became the pastor, but then there was, um, you know, kind of a church split. There was a, you know, a, a couple that kind of took off and took some other families with them. And, and so I know that there were, you know, there were some times where it was discouraging or disappointing <clears throat> to go from that to where it is now, you know, to where you're seeing these people established in the faith and doing the work of the ministry and just, you know, genuinely mature in the faith and having a, a, a desire for others and to pass it on to others and to, be taking this out on their own and to know that, you know, God used you guys in this process. God used you to help bring this about in their lives. I mean, how, how describe how you guys feel about what you're seeing God do. Um, I think it's just humbling. <laughs> humbling. That's the word. It's humbling. Um, because what you're describing about the church split, it actually happened after our son died. So it started with suffering. Um, it right. started with suffering and a right. lot of people in the church didn't understand right. how something like that could happen to people that are actively serving the Lord. Like that's their job, you know, right. and it, and it really kind of, I think, um, opened them up to be teachable. Mm. Um, so we talk about the process of sanctification, sanctification and, um, how it says in Romans, the renewing of our mind, mm -hmm. but, but in order yeah. to have our mind renewed, 12 Romans 12 one said we need to present our body as living sacrifices we need to be we need to be um what's the word in English like broken or we need to be open to receive that new mind yeah. um, and so through suffering we've seen um that God has used that to make the people more receptive and more teachable um in their own personal lives uh what he's done in our life mm -hmm. um our son passed away in 2014. Uh, we lost another baby in 2015. In 2018, Juan's mother was diagnosed with terminal cancer and died three years later. 
um, in two three thousand months. three, three months. months. Sorry, sorry, three, three months, months later. Um, and then in 2019, our country had a major like political unrest and we were locked in our houses for two weeks. So this was pretty recent. And then now in 2020, uh, the coronavirus, the church once again is, um, if you want to talk about like circumstantially unstable, like the people's lives. Hmm. And so um, I think that the Lord has really used that as a catalyst for um, people to be teachable, for people to really want to know the truth. Yeah. I think right. it's also, besides it's being humbling for us, but um, that's how God works, you know. <laughs> he, yeah. he humbled, humbles us to be able to be teachable. Yeah. But it's also fulfilling. I mean, it just, doesn't it just make your hearts just full and just, Bubble. Because you know it's not you. I'm, yeah, right. You, exactly. like you know it's nothing that you've done. It's just the Lord right. through you has uh, uh, like given you that privilege yeah, to see right. him mature his church. It's yeah. his. Yeah. And so you're humbled and it keeps you so content to know yeah. that it's not you. Mm -hmm. I think if mm -hmm. um, it didn't start with humility, then there would be maybe the um, the temptation of like, yeah, my life has been so horrible and everyone sees how spiritual we are in the midst of suffering. That's not it at all. Because if it were right. up to us, the church would be empty right. because we would probably yeah. be doing things to try to draw people in. Um, right. Instead, like we'll be at church on a Sunday and a new person will walk in and one of our members will be like, who invited that person? You know, like <laughs> where are these people coming from? Because yeah. we mm. don't know. They just come out of the blue and we're like, the Bible says the Lord added every day those were, yeah. who were his. You know, we just have mm -hmm. to keep focused on him. So it's mm -hmm. so humbling and, and, and it's just a privilege. It's just yeah. an mm -hmm. ongoing privilege to see his faithfulness in our church here in Cuenca, in our family, in the Quichuas, um, in what he's doing all over the world when we're able to share yeah. with other pastors. And so... Um, it's just like it says in, in Hebrews, like run the race, you know, just mm. be consistent, trust the Lord, be consistent because he is doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been, uh, it's completely different as what, what we started mm. and now, you know, we have now, as I said, uh, family, family that uh, even closer than family. Uh, that's, not not talking anything about blood, but right. <laughs> the family in Christ, who we are, we know where our hope is, and and it's been even nice, in, even in this time, because Ecuador is going through a really difficult uh, economic uh, situation too. So many of the families are going through difficult times, but um, but. Um, it's been a month now and we have had food every day and uh, God's provision has been really nice. And, and uh, so share with us a bit. Uh, I know that Tirsa, you and Rachel keep in touch a bit. And how long has it been since you've left the house? Um, I have not. Long? Juan's left some, but how about yeah, Juan's out. He goes out to get groceries or toilet paper or yeah. to deliver bread and cinnamon rolls. But um, I have not left the house. And my daughter and I, my, we have a 21 month old daughter. I've not left the house since March 16th. Mm. Wow. So I think that's like seven <laughs> weeks. I didn't count, but um, huh. it's been a long time. Enough time for Tallulah to grow into the next size of clothes. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, so um, is there any ideas of when when you guys are going to be able to uh, be more free to move about? Um, they're trying to open up the the or, or make the the things easier, but um, we we probably will say um, one more month. Okay. Till wow. the end of May probably. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so are the streets the, being patrolled and all that kind of thing? Yes. Yes. Wow. So yeah. if you went out, you'd be you'd be arrested or whatever. I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine, fine the first two times, and the, the third time I'll be taken to jail. 
Wow. Yes. So there's certain times of the day you're allowed to go out? Yeah, we're only allowed um, to go out from 5 a.m. 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. And only on a specific day based on your license plate. Okay. So you only get to go out once a week and it can only be one member of your family. Yeah. Well, I, I, for example, I could walk outside, you know, but oh, okay. why, why would I be just walking? For yeah. <laughs> like, would you guys be allowed to go for a walk? Could you go out and go for a walk uh, through the neighborhood? Not really. Not no. what, you, you no. have, you're supposed to wear a face mask. Um, okay. And yeah. it's, it's not really you, encouraged. You are, you're encouraged to stay at home. Wow. Not, not to go out. So it's, yeah. And children, as, as, children aren't allowed to go out no, at all. No. You can't mm -hmm. go out with a child. So huh. um, that leaves us, if one, go, they, if one of us goes out, the other the one only has reason, to go out. The only reason wow. that uh, we are allowed to go out is to either go get groceries or, mm -hmm. or medicine. Um, there are certain people that have some, um, uh, like a, a special permit to go out every day, uh, but they deliver food or mm. deliver medicine or things like that. Mm. Um, they have special permits for that, you know. Mm. So for so example, restaurants like, have, have that permit to, to send food. Only they cannot open the restaurant, they, they can just deliver the food. Oh, okay. So what are you saying? I've heard that you've been delivering some food. We uh, have. Tell us about you know, what you've been uh, making that's, in your that's house another, and, and uh, the, how you've been That's creatively. a good sneaky way to get out. <laughs> yeah, except every time he goes out to deliver food, he comes back all nervous and riled up. I don't, I don't have any of those permits. I don't have any of those your... permits, you know, but I only go out the days that I, I'm allowed to. Mm. And, um, well, God, for, for, for several years, you know, we've, trying to live in a, in a, how would you say, like a frugal way in our house and, and just uh, uh, being responsible at, at home and, and trying to, to be a, a testimony to our, our church that uh, no matter the circumstances, we, we can trust the Lord and live by faith. And so we, we learn to make, ba uh, to bake and to make uh, breads and, 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 um, and uh, we and Tirsa makes delicious cookies. <laughs> yeah. So, so people from church used to buy those things from us, you know. And since the lockdown started, um, one of the our neighbors, who was the the principal of of Talula's uh, kindergarten, <laughs> that also was was closed because of the coronavirus. Huh. Um, she asked us to to bake breads for her, and she was going to deliver those. And so that's what she has been doing, and we have been baking and baking hmm. to to provide for that for for her and and and, and us, you know. Yeah. But also, we have had more more people that have that wanted to to buy our bread and 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 cookies and and. So, so it's been just a, a way that God has used. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in uh, and we we are just uh, amazed with what He's doing because we don't really know what we're doing. <laughs> 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 to be honest, and we have stories of of how God is just uh, clearly is is mm. His hand providing for us, and and uh, not because we are. Like, we have no idea what we're doing, but he's yeah. providing through, through, for us selling, through selling bread. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great testimony. Not only, you know, as you sharing what he's doing with the church, but through this time, he's, he's giving you a means to, to yeah. you know, make bread and bake bread and, and uh, <laughs> help people that want it. Yeah. And helps you guys by selling it. So it's uh, just a, yeah. a testimony all the way around. To just well, the greatness we, of God. We can tell you. We can tell you a funny story about this. And go ahead, you can tell okay. it. Okay. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> I like how he says we have learned to bake. Did you guys catch that? He says yeah, we yeah. have been baking. <laughs> well, on a different podcast about marriage, we can talk about the we have been baking. <laughs> that, that's uh, but, that's called an exclusive we. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, <laughs> so when the lockdown started, um, we needed flour. And we couldn't find it. I mean, I know in the States, people couldn't find toilet paper and like hand sanitizer. Well, we couldn't find basic pantry staples. Hmm. So Juan went to several places, including the market where we normally get our flour, and they didn't have it. And, and to be able to make these breads to sell, we needed wheat flour. So he finally goes to a store that I would say was more affluent, like for more affluent people. Hmm. And he said, do you have wheat flour for bread? Yeah, yeah, we have that. So Juan says, great, give me a hundred pounds of wheat flour for bread. And he comes home and the next time that I make, I think it was like seven or eight breads that I had to deliver, the bread was raw. And we could not figure out what had happened from one day to the next that this bread, it was raw. Um, and you for, mean it, it didn't bake? In, it didn't in the inside, it was yeah. raw, huh. like raw. Huh. Okay. Uh, it was very mushy. <laughs> <laughs> we have been baking mushy bread. So we're like, what's going on? You know, we keep using this flour. I'm listening to baking podcasts. I'm Googling the science behind bread making, yeah. gluten, proteins. You, yeah, you name it. We're trying to figure it out. Well, it's not and the first people, time you've made bread. No, but something... Yeah. My recipe yeah. for years was fine with uh, the other flour, and Juan uh, brings home this rich people flour, and it doesn't <laughs> turn out. It, it's not working. Yeah. And every day, Juan would go outside and just stare at the bag and be like, what is wrong with this flour? You know? <laughs> and we keep selling bread. I mean, the bread wasn't raw. I changed the recipe after like blood, sweat, and tears, two weeks of investigating. We changed the recipe. It's fine. People keep buying bread and they keep buying bread and they keep buying and, bread. And only those like. That. And they wanted the wheat bread. Huh. That, okay. It's been a month. We have probably used about 60 pounds of this flour. And Juan comes inside and he says, I know what's wrong with the flour. And I said, what is it? It's flour for making pasta. It's not <laughs> flour for making bread. <laughs> How'd you figure that out? He, he read said, the bag. He read the it. Bag. <laughs> <laughs> All those times you went out looking at the bag, you never read it? <laughs> he didn't read it. No. And then he says, no. we have been baking. I would like to re recall that. <laughs> We've been making bread for a month. With flour uh, <laughs> that doesn't have gluten. It's, it's, you know, because it's, it was like we having less of that. And I, I said, well, let's, let's get another um, hundred pounds from, for, from the, the, the wheat flour that we used to get before. So then I brought that hundred pound bag and then I compare the bags and one says, <laughs> To bake bread, and the other one says to bake to make uh, noodles. <laughs> yes. uh, <laughs> but for one month, I mean, and I'm counted up because when when we realized that we were crying, we were laughing so hard. We had <laughs> named the flower the flower from hell. Yeah, we had named that flower. The flower from hell. We were on the floor laughing so uh, hard, and we just said only God could do this. I had sold almost 200 loaves of wow. wheat bread with flour that was for making pasta. So how wow. you explain that is you just, can't explain that. just God, yeah. Yeah. God giving us grace and uh, doing whatever he did to yeah. for us to provide for our needs. <laughs> and it just, as I was saying, it humbles you, you know, because you are yeah. so dumb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And God, God, is, God is faithful. So yeah. I think that is the whole process with the the church too, you know. Ah, amen. Uh, not based on our, our intelligence or no. what we bring to what the church. We bring, yeah. But in our in, in our own understanding, it's like we're trying to do best, you know, trying to perform, trying to do our and not knowing that God is in control. <laughs> right. Yeah. Even no, when we share that message, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when you get the 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 um the, the real flour that you're supposed to use <laughs> and start making bread, people will probably complain that you switched 
flower. <laughs> Where's my mushy bread? Where's my mushy bread? <laughs> yeah. Why does this bread taste better than the other bread that I have been buying? Yeah. <laughs> but let me tell you a story, you know, and, it, and, and it's one of those things that we've had to write down because 20, 30 yeah. years from now, when we look back on our, on this time, specifically the coronavirus and our ministry yeah. and stuff, you know, how God provided when like scientifically it shouldn't yeah. work. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. I had, uh, you know, just what you described and, you know, all the, all the hardships that the church has been through, through the years with the various, you know, the government issues and lockdowns and then the suffering and, you know, you guys losing, uh, children and, and all that. And, and here is, uh, you know, another lockdown and it's really affecting people and affecting, you know, people's livelihood in the economy. And, and, uh, you know, with some, I mean, there's just great fear and panic. I mean, there really is with some people and, but to see and to hear these stories of, you know, you guys and, you know, your own walk with God and your own view of God and, 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 you know, the people in your church and to hear how established in the faith they are and functioning and, and in the midst of crisis, their heart is to disciple other people, not, not, you know, retreat and and panic and feel sorry for themselves and be self-centered and, you know, kind of like the others that aren't, that are weak in the faith that this is happening they come to you and say, Oh, God's judging us because we're miserable. You know, I mean, that's their whole focus is, is them being miserable where your people who are established in the faith, they're using this as an opportunity to disciple other people rather than, you know, being self-centered and, and a a passage that just comes to my mind is first Corinthians chapter three. And um, you know, the, the context of this is, those who are planting and watering the church. And Paul says, you know, I, uh, I planted and Apollos watered and, and then he goes through and <clears throat> he talks about, you know, this foundation in verse 11 for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. And then he says, now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones or wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear. So these people have, you know, the people that you're working with in your church, they've, they've had this foundation of Christ in their life. You have come along in the last 12 years and you have been building with gold, silver, precious stones and not wood, hay, and straw. And, you know, what the materials you're using to build their faith you know, to establish them in the faith. It says each, each one's work will become clear in verse 13. It says, for the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work, which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. And so here we are in this day of, you know, this pandemic and, you know, in this, I mean, the materials that you have been building into these people's lives with lives with, and I'm talking about the content of your teaching, you know, the content of your teaching, is it gold, silver, precious stones, or is it like wood, hay, and straw? And now here's your people 12 years later, they're in this pandemic, can't work, can't leave. And, and their faith is being tested with fire the hardship and the trials and the difficulties of this day. And, and it's, and it's proving what you have been building in their, you know, building their lives with, you know, their faith with through these years that it's been gold, silver, precious stones. And because look at them, look at how they're responding, look at how they're reacting, look at how they're, you know, what their focus is, look at where their hearts are. It's on discipling other people. I mean, it's clear that, They've been built with gold, silver, precious stones. And it says, if anyone's work, um, which he has built on it indoors, he will receive a reward. And when you just, and that's why I was asking, you know, how does this make you feel in your heart? Because when I look at our Karen church, 
and just I, I'm like you. It's it's humbling. I, I, I to this day I can't believe that God took took us from Northern Virginia and led us halfway around the world and used us to establish a you know plant a church and establish a people in the faith. And it's but at the same time when you every time I talk with them and I hear that they're still doing well and they're still you know, walking in the faith and establishing other people in the faith and discipling other people, you know, even in the midst of hardship and difficulties, it's, <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's just, it's like a reward. It's, it's fulfilling. It's, I mean, your, your heart just bubbles over with just, you know, praise and excitement. And, and so I just, I just think, you know, you guys in the midst of this and just seeing how the church is just functioning is just, it's just got to feel like a reward. I mean, this, it's just rewarding to just see, you know, what God is doing and in and through them. <clears throat> that is, God is just good, you know, and, oh. mm -hmm. and um, it's really nice to see him in other people. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, this time one of the men from one of the families called me and he said like, Hey, um, want to deposit some money in your account and hmm. and they did you know wow. they care for us they they want to they want us to to be taken care of, taken care of. and mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice you know it's Amen. and um another lady it's an older lady too um she bought us a bread <laughs> i think that was the excuse but uh, she gave us an envelope with uh, some money for us, and that was really, really nice, you know. That uh, God God used um, the people from church to to take care of us, and it's it's just thankful, yeah. <laughs> thankful for that. It's um, it's how God uh, just shows us that He has never left us, and He's not never going to leave us. Yeah. I, I think, too, for us in our church, what we've seen is even though we can't be physically present, we're all still present in each other's lives. I don't know if that mm -hmm. makes sense because our focus has never changed. Mm -hmm. So for us as a family and the families in our church, our focus has, hasn't been the coronavirus. It's yeah. been what is God doing in the midst of. Yeah. Um, and so <laughs> even when I think of all the times, you know, Paul said, I can't be with you physically, but you know, I'm with you in prayer, or I'm with you in these lessons, I'm with you in the Lord. Um, and I think that that's just been really evident in the families in our church, because yeah. our focus hasn't wavered. Um, and that's just by the grace of God. And so even in the midst of uncertainty, we can take care of each other. Mm. Um, and, yeah. and the only person that gets the glory for that is the Lord, because he's the one that gives the growth. Mm. Amen. Yep. Amen. So how are you guys doing financially? Um, God has been a, I mean, used the, the bread to pay rent. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. pay the rent with um, our mushy bread. I think I mentioned <laughs> to you guys uh, before, but um, uh, since this started, you know, um, we made our budget. And, um, uh, and the first, first time I went, uh, to get groceries, you know, I got in panic and I used the whole month budget in one day. Wow. <laughs> so we still have two dollars in the in the grocery money envelope. <laughs> yeah. And tomorrow is okay. the end of, of the month. So no, we're, today is tomorrow. Today, is yeah. So we're good. <laughs> like we literally ate our last egg today. And we <laughs> ate it because we knew that tomorrow was a new month. But um now, when you go when you go for groceries, when you go to the market or go to the grocery store, is there is there are there groceries to be had, or are yeah. the are the shelves empty or? At the some, beginning, some at the things. beginning, it was it was empty. Like people huh. got panicked and just grabbed a lot of people, a lot of things, you know. But um, now it's calmed now down it's, a little. It's calmed down. In um, okay. things things have um, uh, grown in price. Yeah, it's gonna, it's well, from gonna October happen. to now when we had that lot, when lot. we had that political strike and stuff, yeah. um, I would say it's at least a 60% <clears throat> price increase in everything. Yes. Wow. wow. Um, and, and that's in less than a year and people are really, really struggling financially. So since mm -hmm. the church hasn't met in person, 
other than the people that have given us money directly, there have been mm. no offerings for the yeah. church. And so the right, guy right, from right. church that's in charge of the money, I think he's worried about us. Yeah, he he is, and he's um he's uh he's been telling me, you know, what uh, what we can do or um yeah, and um, we're praying about that. Hmm. But um okay. But uh, so what are, um, <clears throat> what are some main prayer requests that uh, you would like our listeners to be praying for you guys regarding? Um, I, I would say for us to, to find out a way to, once this is over, you know, we can, I know things are going to be different, but uh, how we are going to meet with the, the people again and, and uh, you know, it's going to be a different dynamic that right. we don't know exactly how it's going to work. Hmm. We, the place where we meet, the school where we normally meet, we can't get into until at least September. The, like even if the government oh, wow. left restrictions, the school is closed until oh. September. So like we're realistically looking at online teaching through the summer probably because we don't have money to pay rent to go somewhere else um right. and the government restrictions on like how many people can meet would probably um inhibit us from getting together as a church we mm -hmm. could probably meet in homes in mm -hmm. smaller groups mm -hmm. um once they open up once they open the country yeah. but um we won't be able to meet at our church location until in the best case scenario september is what oh, we've been wow. told yeah, schools like that's that's information that we have for for schools. Yeah, and we meet in a school. And we meet in a school, and we cannot uh, use those facilities anymore. Wow, so far. So, as I was telling telling you, like how we're gonna meet, it's one of the the prayer requests for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, huh. Yeah. We're tr we're trying to get better at the online stuff. So like making the studies and, and the teaching that Juan records um, more accessible. So people can pray that we would um, manage well. Uh, we're, we're not really, we're not really smart. Not, not that we're not smart, but we don't know. There's so many social media platforms. Right. We barely know how to manage one or two. The, and right now we're kind of like we got pushed into the pool, you know, so we're it, trying to even, to even though we were already sharing messages on Facebook every week for several years. But um, to have an effective um, uh, use of those tools, hmm. uh, we are not uh, uh, prepared, oh, yeah. <laughs> I would say. Yeah. Uh, you, you guys gave us some. <laughs> microphones that I use every every time I record mm. computer but the, the computer isn't working very well anymore <laughs> oh. so there are other other things that God will you mean because it's old or yeah, yeah it's it's old so I cannot update anymore like you know how you have that stuff. cool background Scott yeah Ours, do, ours won't do that. So every time Juan records, everybody gets the same background of his <laughs> office. See all those books? Well, that's, like our, this, is just, this is just a setting in Zoom. I know, exactly, but ours but, won't do it. Like, our, our, our computer Zoom, is too old to do that. It says huh. it needs a, um, a newer version <laughs> of processor of the oh. machine in order to, to put that in the background. Yeah. Huh. So I mean, but, these aren't like deal breakers, but we are trying but, to. But be, you know, this isn't, and we don't say that to uh, for any other reason more than how God is being faithful with us. That right, mm -hmm. right. So far, yeah. um, we do the media of the church. You know, mm -hmm. we we don't have a full big equip. I mean, a team to do that, and hopefully one day we will. Uh, because it's really a blessing to have that. And I know that uh, FBC yeah. has um, a media team that um, allows you guys to to share with, with other people, and it's really comfortable. Mm -hmm. you know? 
so uh, I really value that and and I, I I think I've shared with you guys once that um, one day will be nice to to have that kind of help and support to to grow into into having that yeah, but yeah. Um, but also a uh, good thing is that God is working in people right now to see that need here and uh, we can grow little by little to to when they have uh, a team to to support media but also other ministries in the yeah. church amen <clears throat> anything else we can pray about other than um the church uh the logistics of getting back together um I, I, I would say pray for all the Latin American churches, um, just Latin America as a whole. A lot of the developed, undeveloped countries are really suffering and um, churches that maybe aren't as established in the faith, you know, this could maybe make or break them. Mm -hmm. So just pray for Latin America, pray for the Latin American churches, for the other Latin American missionaries that FBC works for, the people that FBC knows and counts as family and just, um, you know, just to see what God is going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a great need uh, to grow, to grow in the Lord. And, and um, as we were saying before, for us right now is that time to sit back and see what God's going to do, what he's going to do with his church. Yep. Yeah. And we're excited about it, you know, but there are some, some, some times that, for example, when I leave uh, those couple days a week that I leave, um, it's easy to not see him and, or focus on the circumstances, you know, how mm -hmm. everybody's stressed out and, um, and kind of like uh, ugly to each other's. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, driving in the street right now, it's uh, you get a lot of. Um, it's it's a it's a vibe of, uh, mm -hmm. of um, you know, like it's an unpleasant um, reaction from the people. Huh. Uh, everybody's stressed out there or with their worries, you know. Yeah. It, it's, I get get home and then i need i need i need some time to just wind down and calm down mm -hmm. uh, so, so that's that's something you can pray for us too. <laughs> yeah yeah well why don't we uh let me let me pray for you guys now and um uh, really appreciate you taking the time to join us and uh let me pray. <clears throat> Father in heaven, we just uh, thank you for your grace and mercy. Um, thank you for Juan and Tirsa. Thank you for the privilege you've given us as a body at Fellowship Bible Church to uh, just partner with folks like, like them. Um, Lord, thank you for the work that, that you've first done in them and bringing them to this point where uh, you're able to do this work through them. And uh, thank you for just the 12 and a half years that, um, that you've used them there in Cuenca to establish this church in the faith. <clears throat> Lord, clearly um, they, you have been using them to build the church with gold, silver, and precious stones. And, and just the testimonies that they shared with us um, of just the way that people are functioning and ministering and it's just a genuine uh, example of Ephesians chapter four pastors and <clears throat> church leaders equipping the saints to do the work of the ministry. And Juan and Tirsa have been equipping these folks and, and now they're doing the work of the ministry and it's um, just extremely rewarding and fulfilling and, humbling and it's just it's amazing that that you could use any of us to do to do such a thing um to take us from people who were born by nature children of wrath 
separated from you, condemned enemies um, of you. These are just descriptions of us before we accepted Christ. And to take us from that place to seated in Christ at his right hand and, and able to use us to genuinely establish other people in the faith, Lord, is just an amazing testimony of, of your faithfulness, of the power of your spirit. And, um, and Lord, we just um, continue to just lift them up before you. We pray for the, the Cuenca Church. We pray that um, as folks interact with um, believers and unbelievers, that, that, Lord, they would just be a beacon on the hill that's just drawing many to you. Um, Lord, we just thank you for, um, although um, none of us would, would um, you know, desire hardship and trials and difficulties, but we know because we live in a fallen world, these things are going to happen and we're going to experience these things. And, and they actually become things that you use to make people desperate, to make people needy, to make people realize their need for you. And I just thank you for the way that the Cuenca Church has taken advantage of, of this pandemic and, and just the hardship that it's creating uh, there in Cuenca, in Ecuador. And, um, and we do pray for more. We pray for your continued leading and guidance and direction. As Juan and Tirsa shared, just um, the place that they have been meeting in the school, they won't be allowed to meet there again, uh, at least until September. And um, when things are relaxed a bit and they uh, are able to <clears throat> be out and about and meeting with people uh, in person and maybe even meeting again as a church, Lord, that you would just give them wisdom to, and, and that you would provide, provide a, a place uh, that they would be able to meet together again and fellowship together face to face. Um, in the meantime, uh, as they've shared, we just pray that you would um, just provide the resources they need and the direction for, um, how to effectively use the, all the different social media platforms to just get the truth out and to get it to, to those that are, that are hungry for it. Lord, we pray as Juan also shared that um, they've got 20, 22 families in the church. Um, Lord, we pray that you would just raise up those that could help uh, with uh, just the media side of things and, that uh, Juan wouldn't have to do on top of uh, studying and preparing lessons and discipling and, and sharing the truth that he wouldn't have to uh, also uh, do the, this various audio and video editing and posting of messages that, that need to be done. A lot of that is just very, very time consuming. And, and we just pray that you might raise up some help for him and in, in those areas and, uh, Lord, we pray for their finances. We pray that you would uh, just provide, continue to provide the finances that they need to um, pay rent and buy groceries and um, just to continue to, to live. And even though they're down to their last egg, we just thank you for just the confidence that they have in you. And, and um, Lord, it's just refreshing to, um, just to see their faith and to see the uh, just the joy and, and the excitement on their faces of, of just seeing your faithfulness in their lives over and over and over and over. And, um, and so Lord, we just lift them up to you. Uh, we just thank you for them. And we just pray that you continue to bless them. And uh, we just ask these things in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Well, thank Good you for joining together. us. <clears throat> yep. We nice. love you guys. FBC loves you guys. Thank you. Thank You're you. very special. Very special to the body here. Thank, thank God. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Miss you guys. 
Hope you're feeling better, Jim. <laughs> Look forward to when we can see each other again. Yeah. I know. Yeah. We're looking forward to it too. My mom tells me every day that we need to take one of the humari humanitarian flights that the U.S. consulate is offering and come home <laughs> every day. And I'm like, mom, what am I going to do at home? Like, I, I, I'd be in an unemployment line just like the rest of the U.S. at this point. So yeah, um, yeah. believe me, we're dreaming about when we can yeah. come home for a little bit also. Yeah. And you'd have some people that would be really missing their mushy bread. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> mushy bread, cinnamon rolls. That yeah. we bake. Uh, so yeah. why don't you guys ask Juan how <laughs> he bakes the cinnamon roll? <laughs> I just cut the bread. No, and, no, 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 no. <laughs> I just stand there and tell her how to make everything better. Yeah. Without doing <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I, I do the final approval and. Um, yeah. Well, somebody's got to be the taste tester. I mean, that's yeah. a really, really expensive or really uh, important role. <laughs> important, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't taste it. He just stands there and stomps his feet and says, this bread is no good. <laughs> <laughs> really helpful, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, <laughs> the next day we eat that bread. Yeah, we eat the reject bread. If Juan rejects it, it's not like <laughs> oh, okay. it gets thrown out. We eat that bread. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Put it in the toaster or just, uh, you know, and it yeah. tastes really good. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we All right. Them. Well, you guys take, take care and, and keep in touch. And we want to just thank all of our listeners for tuning in again and uh, following this episode. And um, uh, just ask that you all keep Juan and Tirsa in mind and uh, just continue to be praying for them in the days to come.